So you got shades of Iran Contra, which really just continue. Uh, the ATF and the CIA. Uh, Gary Webb, of course, unfortunately was uh, a victim of, uh, of of the CIA. Uh, yes, um, after writing a book called Dark Alliance, he was um, he he was, which is a book about uh, the Iran Contras and how uh, the CIA brought the actually created the cocaine uh, crack epidemic in Los Angeles in the late '80s, and uh, the whole understanding of the way this this uh, I'm going to break this down. But anyway, Gary Webb wrote this book. It proved it. Um, he was in the process of writing another book, and, uh, and uh, the CIA warned him not to, and he was going to go on the record with a few things that he maybe he should have went straight to the press, but at that point he didn't. Anyway, he was sort of running from the CIA and uh, committed suicide, or that's what they said. He shot himself twice in the head. Yes, you can look that on record. He was shot twice in the head, and it's ruled a suicide. Unbelievable how they could just put it right in your face, and nobody does anything, nobody cares, nobody looks at it. It's just unbelievable. It really is. Gary Webb. Anyway, everyone should look, look at him up, too, uh, and the book Dark Alliance. <sighs> Anyhow, so all of this tyranny is going on. You know, the ATF gunwalkers now have the CIA protecting the uh, drug trafficking. Um, they're bringing the guns down to give to the, um, to the to the Sinaloas, who now are, con are on record controlling the entire meth trade. I mean, now the globalists have controlled this all along. They controlled the opium wars. That's how Cecil Rhodes and, and all of these other, uh, you know, old school uh, robber barons, Illuminati people got their wealth was through, uh, basically through, through heroin and opium. Uh, and that's again on record. You can look that up. That's really interesting. And then prohibition was when the Rothschilds and everyone made money because again, that's the truth. That uh, as we're we're segueing closer and closer to the um, to the prison system, and what they did was what they realized with prohibition was by making it illegal, it created all this crime and it created a lot of profits and it created a lot of illicit ways to make money. Um, so then, the, the of course the government then created this enormous. Um, Federal Bureau of Investigation slash Treasury slash what's now the ATF and the FBI and but what they did was create this huge they started to build this huge infrastructure because of this crime wave quote unquote that uh, these people were uh, these guys were out there and they made all these gangster movies and all these crime, but meanwhile, uh, all the people, the, the connected people, like the Kennedys and the Rothschilds, and they all profited from from the the uh, illicit trade of alcohol. Um, and when it became illegal through the Harrison Act and uh, others that drug the drug laws, again they called quote unquote the Rockefeller drug laws in, in the 70s, unbelievable, started to uh, to realized they had to go after something if they made alcohol legal now what were they going to do with all this infrastructure they just built up to protect the, everybody from the bootleggers and the criminals well they just figured out more ways to fill the prisons and then when that got too expensive on the states the states started to sell off the prisons and they started to sell off the the um, to, to reduce the debt uh, on the state the burden on the state and now what we have is a growing burgeoning prison system that if you look on the on, on record from 1980 incarceration in the United States in prison system has increased like 5,000 percent it's unbelievable it's just like if you're looking at from if it was a graphic line and you were looking at a straight line for more or less for a hundred years and then it just starts to just make this huge incline up to where we are today and what does it mean all these people that are in, incarcerated um, you know, wh what are they doing? Did you, did you realize that 70% of the people that are actually in jail are in jail for what are known as quote-unquote victimless crimes or violations of crimes that they already paid debts to society in many cases to? Or if you really investigate it, it's unbelievable. I mean, you're, we're not talking about a drunk driver uh, that killed somebody and that's, that's why he should be in jail. Um, because clearly, you know, he created, that's manslaughter, and he murdered, killed somebody. But we're talking about somebody that had one too many drinks, gets a DUI, has to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to, uh, to basically pay off his debt to society. It follows him wherever he goes, that drunk driving. 
because now they're figuring out ways to make every law you have follow you so that it affects your ability to make income. It affects your ability to, uh, to, um, to well, obviously, to, to, to get certain positions or to get a job. That's a, so that's, of course, the income. But it, it's, a, it's a stain, and it could be something simple, like you just had one too many drinks at a Christmas party a couple times in, in, the wrong, in, in, in the wrong amount of time. You know, maybe it happened twice. Personally, I've never had a DUI. I've never had. I've never been arrested. I've never been incarcerated. But I fight for the rights of others who are being, uh, you know, really taken advantage of by the system. I mean, let's face it. You pay your debt to society. You should be. That should be it. If you're a violent felon, maybe it should follow you to that. That is because you're being employed by by society and everything else. But if you have, have uh, uh, you know instances where you're not a violent felon and you have a one-time uh, occurrence like uh, somebody uh, in, insults your, your girlfriend and you, you beat them like a, to a pulp and you get an assault charge because you were defending her rights or something or her honor or whatever and maybe it was a bad move but you pay your debt for society and then you can't get a job because well it looks like you're an assault oh you're dangerous you see they want to classify us I mean pay your fine pay your debt and that should be it now, again, a lot of people disagree with that. Well, if you disagree or if you agree, please call in at 772-905-3018. I'd like to hear from you because I know a lot of people probably have problems with the prison system or might not really understand how the, how the, uh, the judicial system, as I'm going to continue to go into, really preys upon the people of the United States, just like the banks. I mean, everybody really sort of knows it, but you just, well, you just sort of, that's the way it is, or you, or you accept it, or you don't really, I mean, we all have to pay fines. I mean, you have to get your emissions done. You have to get the, this done. If you don't, then they send you a fine because it was late. Then uh, you have to uh, title your car, uh, register your car. You have to pay tax on your car in certain states. Uh, you have to, uh, they just, you know, make sure that your toilet isn't too, has too much uh, water in it, or you have to uh, use these right, these, special light bulbs and now they want to pass they did actually pass a law that incandescent light bulbs are they're going to get rid of them i mean it sounds like you know like you could mistake it for being so what who cares well that's what they're hoping because then it just goes down to well who cares if you have to own your home they're already making it so nobody i mean if you're lucky enough to have a home and somehow pay for it until it's paid off they'll probably still figure out a way to take it from you because they want property rights to be gone. And if you don't think that that's true, read books like Eustace Mullins' The World Order and see what this collectivist organization of, uh, of the wealthiest, most influential families in the world, what they are doing and how they are just, you know, making like stupid excuses for it, blaming us as they enslave us blaming us, yet we, of course, pay for our own enslavement. It's unbelievable. That's why the Federal Reserve has to be ended. That's why this whole prison system is the way that it is. And I'm going to go into that right now, into some detail. Now, the privatized prison system, as we were, since we were talking about the drugs and the CIA and Gary Webb and the Contra scandal, and this is like, you know, you just have to be really, really, really naive to think that, oh, it doesn't happen. This is just a one-time occurrence. Ah, it's some bad people. That's the way they use their intelligence. That's the way they use their uh, their methods to get uh, what they want. Their compartmentalization. The people just know what they're what they what they're supposed to know. They don't realize that there's agendas above them, and those that do it. Fortunately, we had some honest people, like with Fast and Furious, an honest. Uh, agents that was this is wrong they report it and then they get fired I mean you start to see how high up this thing goes and where the agenda lies and who's who, who runs these corporations and and why is it that like people like Michael R. Taylor from Monsanto is the Food and Drug Administration uh, it's crazy head and John P. Holdren who wrote Eco Science about you know putting sterilants and vaccines in the food supply and all this other stuff and in the water um, uh, is our science are 
And then they tell you that vaccines and everything are safe, and they tell you all these different things. I mean, people, please. Can't you see? Or are you just too, you know, interested in watching, you know, Simon Cowell and, you know, you know, ridiculing people and mocking them when they go, as they go to his, his mansion. And we watch all these, these shows on television with people driving these, these, these big cars, these expensive cars and live in these million dollar homes and, and they're, 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 dri they're dribbled lives. They're, they're, and everybody's in, entranced by it and dancing with the stars and, you know, uh, all of this stuff, the Jersey Shore, and, and all this stuff, and all the, it's just this ridiculous diversion that works. Movies, drivel, junk, even the news, even if you want to seek the news, that's why I'm here. This is ridiculous. They're, they don't tell you anything. And then if you try to tell them the real truth, they censor it. So what does that mean? That means that our country, the influences that run it, have hijacked our government and are trying to really take away all our rights. Now, you sound, it's, it could say that that sounds crazy, but I keep giving all of these examples of how this is occurring. Now, let's stay on the, prep, the prison system. And let's stay on that. It's all about money, too. I mean, remember, listen, Homeland Security. Head of home, I'm talking about these Michael R. Taylor, and, and I'm talking about John P. Holdren, people in our, in our government, in, in places that could really affect our lives with this, uh, this, this insane books and, and their agendas and the things that they, that they believe in. These people are running our government. I mean, would you actually, for example, would you put, would you make, you know, uh, Mengele the Surgeon General? I mean, this is like what it's likened to, you know, putting people like Joseph Mengele as head of the, you know, the Surgeon General. So when the government starts getting so uh, involved in your lives, you got to realize, like when the mayor of Torrington, Connecticut, went to China saying how interesting it was and blah, 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 uh, I, I just was astounded because... He says that the government is in their lives, not realizing how much the government is in their lives here. I don't mean locally, but federally. And then what's going to happen, it, it filters down. The tyranny filters from the federal to the state level and eventually into the local level. And they will infiltrate all, all levels of government to achieve their agendas. They'll, they'll give, send people on vacations to pass this law. I mean, there's just so much horrific stuff going on that... Is compartmentalized. You think maybe either you're doing something for money and it doesn't matter because who who cares, uh, or you're you're doing it for for power, and lust or greed. And you don't see that what this order is intending to do is to depopulate our planet, control all aspects of human life, food. Now, like then talking about food, you got Monsanto, FDA. Uh, Vice President of Monsanto, chief lobbyist and top lawyer, is the head of the FDA. You got John P. Holdren, our science czar. It's just, it's just frightening. You have, you have Cass Sunstein, and all of these other, these eco-fascists that 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 have this agent, this eugenics agenda, these new age transhumanist uh, eugenists that say we're going to morph into machines and they're going to. You know, honestly, they're going to sell some sort of a fraud where, yes, you'll morph into this machine, your body's not necessary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And people, and it's on Time Magazine. I mean, go to Time Magazine. It was over the summer. I couldn't believe it. It was on the headlines. You know, Ray Kurzweil comes from my town where I lived before I moved to Connecticut in Fresh Meadows, Queens. Went to Queens College. Oh, my God. Kurzweil Hall. <laughs> oh my god. 